In 1990, here on the southern tip of Africa, a deal was made to lift the decades-old ban on all political parties who are opposed in one of history's most notorious and oppressive regimes. The African National Congress, an army largely in exile, was no longer forced to fight a war of bullets from the shadows against the racist creators of apartheid. In 1990, the father of the nation, Madiba, Nelson Mandela, walked free into a new world. The day he has also been waiting for. And then four years later, we cried tears of joy as we witnessed Nelson Mandela being the first democratically elected president of this, the new South Africa. Never and never again shall it be that this beautiful love will again experience the oppression. Excellent! Finally, a black president! I know it so I speak it, I saw it so I rip it The bow with no trick it when I flow with no beat it So I did it In 1995, Francois Pina led South Africa's Springboks to victory In the first ever Rugby World Cup final here at Ellis Park Joel Stransky kicked the drop goal that would unite a nation Against a seemingly indomitable squad of all blacks Madiba, our hero, was there to celebrate the victory with his people So I dedicate this to those who don't turn the other cheek And to those who would rather speak against Colombia we got stronger and you know we had a scrum inside just on their 22. Mertens was standing wide, Bashup was very focused on US Van der and uh, you know this gaping hole for me to kick the ball through you know ex was exposed. I called to the forwards cancel the back row move and uh, they changed the move, the ball came back and fortunately it went over. I was sitting watching that movie Invictus the other night and my wife said to me imagine if the kick had missed. <laughs> I feel that uh, if it was not for the World Cup in 1995, the Rugby World Cup, I'm telling you, this country wouldn't be where it is today. 95, we'll start with that because that was the Rugby World Cup, uh, which came through at a very difficult time when people were still discussing, debating issues about the Springbok emblem. Should the Springbok emblem be kept? Should the Springbok emblem go? 1995, we were sportsmen. You know, we. We played the game of rugby and uh, we loved the game of rugby. We played it with all our hearts and all our souls. At the beginning, black people were supporting England and white people were supporting the box. And of course, uh, Nelson Mandela, he was he was the spearhead of all of that. That you know, if we can if we can show this much unity with regards to sport, if we did that across our society, it would do some wonderful things. The one unifying factor that came through was obviously Nelson Mandela, who, despite the efforts of Louis Late to take him to court as the president of the country, sort of overlooked all of that. And he stuck to his guns and he said, "We're going to have a combined anthem. We're going to have a Springbok emblem because as part of." reconciliation you can't just discard it and say it's payback time so it was great being the best in the world of rugby but here in south africa we love soccer above all else and the prospect of our national team affectionately known as bafana bafana being on the road to greatness took the national spirit to a whole new level a year later in 1996 south africa hosted football's africa cup of nations once again sport was to prove a unifying force bringing people together in celebration south africa is a country with a great diversity of origins languages cultures and even religions its 11 official languages are a testament to the fact that it embraces the challenges presented by a divided past.